it's been such a pleasure to collaborate with Bernard and Amy over the last year or so as they're rethinking how they um, rebuild their program and grant system on AMP Impact. And I'll pass it over to you to, to introduce yourselves and share a little bit more. Thanks, Katrina. Really excited to be here. Um, we're babies in the AMP Impact space, but uh, we're learning fast, I think. Um, Bernard Vickery, I'm the Senior Director with American Red Cross um, for quality data, strategy, quality data and learning uh, with uh, international service and our service to the armed forces. Um, and Amy, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm a lead business and systems analyst um, reporting under Bernard. I support um, our international programming for the most part, international services department in um, the systems usage for our grants management and project management. Right. Thanks, Amy. So um, we just, uh, Katrina asked us to share a couple of thoughts with you this morning. We're just going to cover a little bit about the rationale why we've decided to move to AMP Impact and then um, what a bit of our approach is at the moment as we're um, pushing on towards um, implementing the MVP next year. And um, just wanted to highlight a couple of our success factors. So Katrina, if you just want to shoot through the slides, go to the next slide, thanks. So for us, you know, we've had a, um, a project and grants management system. Um, it's a Salesforce system. It's a homegrown uh, system about eight years old now. Um, and it's really been um, very successful in terms of what we've needed it for in international services here at American Red Cross. However, we have been on a journey in the last few years to really um, consolidate and improve our portfolio project management practice and our grants management practice. Um, particularly the latter, there's been a lot of conversations across all the services of the American Red Cross um, to start to consolidate and standardize around our grant management practice. And so we decided that Given that our system was starting to age, we knew that we needed to do a lot of updating on user experience, um, as well as there's just a lot, of, um, a lot of resources required, people and money, to maintain and continually develop the system. You know, when I came into this role, I, I'm, I have had a number of goes at um, building information systems of this type for international nonprofits through my career. And I'm a firm believer that we should not be in the business of software development, that we should leave that to the experts. And so um, I wanted to get us out of that business and really wanted to leverage the sort of new functionality that's come onto the, um, into the marketplace over the last few years while we continue um, as a business to standardize and, and improve our practice around uh, PPM and grants management. So um, we went down a path of basically evaluating the marketplace. We did a buy-build analysis, what, what I call a buy-build analysis. We're going to continue to invest year over year in the maintenance and the development of our own system, or could we find a product that would um, suit our needs? And of course, um, we found AMP um, after a, about a two, four month study, I guess, Amy, it was. Uh, where we looked at about 30 products. We started with about 30 um, products and vendors, and we went through quite a rigorous process um, with our IT group and our business systems integration group. We had um, a couple of ideas in mind. We, we certainly had a preference to stay on the Salesforce platform, um, given that's also a platform for other systems within the American Red Cross. Um, we wanted to be able to um, keep our grants management, actually drive our grants management and our portfolio project management practice um, together and drive them to new levels on the same platform. So that was really important for us. We certainly wanted to get onto a product which would allow us um, to move away from bespoke programming uh, so that we could basically have little or no code um, and be able to maintain a lot of the a lot of the system ourselves once the MVP is live. Um, and we've been uh, doing a lot of work um, around our own business intelligence capabilities over the last few years. And we wanted systems that could really, or a system that could really support where we're moving with our um, key performance indicators, um, our milestones, all of that practice around PPM and where we've been heading strategically as an organization. Um, and then finally, I'll just say um, one of the factors that came into play in the middle of this buy build analysis was uh, the products that we started to find. Um, and then, of course, AMP, AMP Impact being the one that we chose, 
um, was its scalability across other lines of business for the American Red Cross. Um, so while we're starting this initial implementation with our international service, it will move into our service for the armed forces very quickly. And then there's still a lot of interest um, for from our leadership to see whether potentially this could be used across our domestic um, disaster cycle services as well. So, um, you know, we were looking at the scale. So, you know, we've been pretty happy. That's That was sort of the, our initial foray when we landed on AMP. And then we went into a, a whole process now. And I'm going to let Amy just um, run through the approach that we're taking to get to our MVP next year. Great. Thanks, Bernard. Yeah, I won't go into all the details here. Uh, it's on the slide, so feel free to read through that. But this is just an overview of what our approach has been and our engagement with Vera up to this point. Once we made the decision that we wanted to go with AMP Impact, we wanted to work with Vera Solutions, we had approximately two month initial discovery phase with them, where the purpose of that was to just go deeper than we had been in previous conversations um, to really help uh, our team understand all the capabilities of AMP Impact, how exactly they could be applicable to our business. We had a lot of sessions with the Vera team to show them our current Salesforce system so they understand what we're working with, what our requirements are, where we're coming from, and, and really just help us think about what would be possible um, when converting our current um, processes onto the AMP Impact system. After that, um, we had a four-month design phase with Vera, where um, I and some of my colleagues facilitated design sessions with our various teams within the International Services Department. Um, the objective of that was to really document our processes that some of them we had built years ago, uh, but obviously things change over time. So there was a need to really refresh those processes and get those on paper so that Vera could understand um, what exactly we need um, as far as process management in the system. And through those design sessions, we also wrote detailed requirements, user stories for what we need the new system to do. And then from all those sessions and everything that we presented to Vera, all those conversations, um, they came up with a data model and ERD um, for the proposed system and what the overall solution design would be. Once that design phase was done and, and we knew what we wanted to build, we had an idea of how, how long it would take, what it would entail, uh, we kicked off the build and implementation phase in August. So I think we're about three months in and we just kicked off sprint two. We are doing sort of a, a quasi agile approach of, of three build and configuration sprints. And something that we've done through this build and implementation phase two is is realize that there are other very important pieces of work that are critical to the success um, of the adoption of this system that don't necessarily tie in directly with the build of the system. So things like user acceptance testing, of data migration, the whole change management and rollout approach. So we've set those up as separate projects um, related to the build project. And some of those were leveraging some internal expertise we have in our department, particularly around learning and development to actually drive um, those initiatives. And then there's a couple of points there on just what, um, what's out of scope now for our MVP. And um, we're not tackling dashboard within the project with uh, Vera. That's going to be a standalone project. Um, and the comprehensive business process reengineering will do that sometime in the future. What we've really tried to do is keep it um, just trying to translate what we have in the current system and, and build it in our new system. Thanks, Amy. So uh, Katrina asked me what I cover off on a couple of sort of success factors. And I, I, Katrina, I sort of laughed as I put these together last night because I thought, why am I even doing this one more time in my career? I've I've tried successfully and unsuccessfully to build these systems um, for many organizations. And, and I often joke that I have the scars on my back to prove it. But um, I'm just going to say for now, the, the relationship that we have with Vera is just really amazing. And it's really, I just want to shout out to Gus. I see Gus on the call this morning and we're having just a fabulous time um, with Vera. And I think, to be honest with you, I should have put that in as the first bullet point here on the success factors is the ability to build that relationship with a vendor and to just enjoy what we're doing. Like we're all doing, as I often say, we're, do, we're doing work that blows our hair back and it makes us get up in the morning and that's just fun. I think um, the, the other couple of things that I would highlight, and I think we all know this, but leadership buy-in is a really important thing. And, and I was able to sell that to our leadership right from the beginning. There was no, 
qualms at American Red Cross that we needed to get out of the business of software development and start saving that money, putting that money back into our mission. So that's, you know, one of our first, um, I think, success factors. And then, of course, aligning uh, continual discussion across the whole American Red Cross about aligning our business systems and our enterprise systems and standards. And so uh, we have an initiative, but we, we call it One Red Cross, where even though we have five lines of business in the American Red Cross, we are trying to drive services to use systems, um, the same systems where possible. And that's been a, another big factor here, um, you know, landing on AMP and, and looking towards the future. Um, as Amy said, we've um, we've engaged our users, our users early and often, all the way through the process so far. And so even now during the build, they've seen the system. You know, our many of our users are doing the UAT. Um, so by the time we get to June next year and we launch this product, it's not even going to be new to the organisation. Many many of the staff will have seen it already. Um, I think one of the other big success factors is that we've embedded Amy in the in the Vera development team now. So she spends um, half of her time working for American Red Cross right now and half of her time working for Vera. So um, it's really, it's just great having her, we're getting a lot of, um, I, you know, it's insider trading in some respects, we get to see the in, how the sausage is made. And, um, and then of course, Amy brings all of her subject matter expertise on the business which is extensive, I might add, she brings all of that to the product in real time. So that's a huge success factor. And I think of all the times that I've done this in my career building systems, this may be um, the, the most critical success factor that I could, I should have put this one in red and highlighted it, Amy. Um, and then I would just say too, what I think, you know, building on my first comments, the continuity of the team that we've had with Vera right from the very beginning, from day one, when we contacted Vera to say, could we see the product? Um, the relationship we've had with Katrina and now with Gas and the whole team all the way through the, the discovery work, the design and now the, the build work. I think these are the main success factors um, that I could sort of put out there right now. So we're really looking forward to, to June next year and, and switching the system on. And actually the department's getting quite excited about it as well. So, so we'll stop there, Katrina. Happy to take a few questions if there are any. Yeah, great. I'll, I'm going to open the floor to questions here, but want to just actually respond. Thank you so much for sharing and say on behalf of Vera, it's been such a pleasure working with you both and the whole Red Cross team too. I think we've been really encouraged by the kind of learner's approach that you've taken to this in terms of really wanting to understand what's already there with AMP Impact and then the willingness to kind of, as, as you're redesigning your business processes, both on the program side and the grant side, be open to flexibility and how those are redesigned. And, and I think certainly learnings for us as we're moving in similar directions with other organizations too. So we really appreciate um, appreciate that. And certainly, Amy, your system administrator skill set just on Salesforce is such an inspiration to, um, to so many. So we appreciate that. If there's any questions, I'm going to open the floor to anyone who may want to unmute at this point and ask a question. And if not, I have I have one here, but I'll, I'll pause for a moment. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pose a question then while others are thinking. Um, one thing that I think has been pivotal to where we're at thus far is the is the willingness, as you said, to just restructure some of your processes and take a critical look at that. And I'm curious if you have just any tip or guidance for others on this call as you're thinking about um, refreshing those processes as you're aligning the systems to the actual work that you're conducting. Amy, I'm going to let you answer first. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I think first thing that comes, comes to mind is open-mindedness and humility. Um, I think something that Bernard has said a lot, which has really stuck with me when it comes to processes and how we do things, is everybody likes to think that they're special and that our particular uh, use case is somehow different than everybody else's. But if you really drill down to it, most of the time it's not. We're all sort of doing fundamentally the same things. And so I think what helped us is being able to see AMP impact and the processes that were already built there and that humility to say, 
Well, AMP, the AMP Impact team, the Vera team has worked with a lot of organizations that do work very similar to ours. So we're gonna trust that these processes are pretty comprehensive and reflective of how this process should run. And so just being open to change like that and really when there are, when we have thoughts like, oh, well, we really need it to go like this, challenging that and saying, well, do we actually really need that um, so that we can drive to a place where things are more standardized and simplified, which makes everybody's life easier <laughs> in the long run. Yeah, I would just add to um, while we recognize the importance of business process engineering, and we see that as something that we're going to have to continue to do um, across the department, we do a lot of continuous process improvement um, and it runs across not only from international, but actually across other lines of service. So, for example, the conversation we had during the, the discovery phase with um, domestic cycle services here in American Red Cross around how they manage all of their grants versus how we manage our grants in international and seeing if we could drive those processes together. What we like about um, AMP Impact is we can deliver that we've been we will be able to and we are delivering the MVP based on a lot of our as is processes, even though we know that some of those processes need to change. But given the flexibility of the system, and you know we're going to be able to change up the system and 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 change processes automation etc, even after we go live with the MVP so it hasn't been, you know, we were able to move ahead quickly. Um, and still guarantee the business that look, yeah, you know, a year, two years, three years down the track, we'll have that continuous process improvement really starting to take a foothold. So that's been a, that was a key selling feature actually uh, um, for getting the business case across the line. Um, is this that flexibility to improve the system um, on an ongoing basis? Yeah, if I could just jump in, I just saw Vicky's question here, and I think what Bernard was just saying really gets at um, the answer to Vicky's question. Um, it, it, it was a hard decision, um, but I think something that we realized is that some of the processes that we may want to re-engineer would be a massive undertaking that you need to really plan in advance for months, maybe even a year in advance, because it requires getting so many people at around the same table together to re-engineer. Um, so we thought that could we could really get stuck in that place and really delay ever moving forward with a new system. So we decided to just move forward with translating more or less our current system processes into the AMP impact system. But a key point as Bernard was saying was we knew that because we are doing, we are util utilizing Salesforce out of the box functionality specifically for approval processes. We knew that, hey, we can build it like this, but if we have time to sit down and re-engineer some of our processes, we can go into the system and actually tweak those processes. We're not, we're not wedded to those for years to come because we heavily custom coded everything. So that was a key factor.